And uh, one very famous work is this work right here, The Persistence of Memory. It's Dali's most famous painting, in fact. Um, and instead of signalling the hour, the clocks in it, uh, in The Persistence of Memory, um, in the painting, they stop time. The title suggests that the time gets recycled in memory, yet the painting itself shows the time melting and decaying, and ants, his symbol of de decay, uh, eat one of the clocks as well. Maybe time dies so that memory can persist outside of it, so that the past will become eternal and the present and the future melt away like the clocks in the painting. A person who recycles the past might feel perfectly at home in this dreamscape type imagery. It's amazing, uh, this work of art, and if you ever get the opportunity to see it, it's in the Museum of Modern Art. It's not a large work at all. It's maybe about so big, <laughs> about oh, maybe maybe a bit bigger than that, but it's not very large. You might think it's a big Dali work, such as some of his massive works, uh, Christ of St. John on the Cross, for example, and major works that stand literally 15 feet high by about 10 feet wide. This is not one of those. This is a very small work of art, but it was one of his most famous and one of his small, smallest works of that style. But that's what Dali would do. Another way in which he would create hallucinogenic states as well was to, or dreamlike states, uh, was to actually wear around his uh, around his neck instead of wearing a cross or a crucifix or some uh, medal or pendant. As a pendant, he would actually upturn a fork, and the fork, of course, would have you know, it has its jagged edges and it has its teeth. And any time he would stay awake for long periods of time in front of the canvas, in front of the uh, sketch pad, and he would actually any time he would fall asleep it would he would uh, it would jolt him to awake to a, an awake state of course and he would write down or notate or paint out the images that he saw in his uh, dream like state so this is how he was able to do it of course Surrealism is about a dreamlike state as well, and uh, Magritte would do a lot of dreamlike states in his work. Uh, he would essentially, again, paint things that were real but in unreal settings, and uh, real settings are unreal images, these sort of things as well. For example, he'd uh, paint a train just cannoning right out of a fireplace, or he'd paint the sky on either side of a door, or he'd paint a woman's body one half colour exactly exactly like the sky, and uh, the uh, the other half not like the sky as well. I mean, uh, these are, or a window within a window. These were the sort of things Magritte would do in his work as well. Another artist, Giacometti, and uh, let's see, Alberto Giacometti was a very famous sculpturalist of the period. He was a, a surrealist sculpturalist. And we're going to have a look at one of his works right here. This is Woman with Her Throat Cut from 1932. In this sculpture, he shows a woman as an insect-like creature, and the spikes along the spine you can see are reminiscent of a trap, suggesting that the woman is an aggressor as well as the victim as well. And the spine is arched, also suggesting death or orgasm. Surrealists conflated or juxtaposed juxtapose different elements, put in el different elements in one sculpture as a means of evoking subconscious fears or fantasies. Surrealist attitudes to women were sometimes, even or often also, ambivalent and occasionally very negative as well. Surrealism. Ladies and gentlemen, amazing, isn't it? I mean, if you look at his, the works of Dali, you can, you can look at them forever and see different things every time you look at them. They kind of, kind of jolt your own mind to think about what they're about. But there are a few of those clues that we are talking about there also talk about, you know, eggs, crutches, teeth, drawers, grasshoppers, ants in uh, Dali's works kind of signal what he was getting at in his work as well. Some surrealists like Joan Miró, very famous from Barcelona in Spain, if you ever go to Barcelona, my goodness, you'll see some amazing Miro sculptures and also the Miro Foundation. You must have a look at that as well. Very, very famous uh, foundation of works of Jean Miro. But a lot of his works are kind of exhibited um, kind of biomorphic type shapes. Some that kind of look like stars, some look like amoebas, some like viruses or even thoughts right there on the canvas or the painting or the paper, the way in which he created. Must be understood as well that uh, Dali and Miro were also two of the best 
lithographers of all time, also some of the best etchers of all time, and they created a vast body of work so that even you and I can own works of theirs in the modern day for not too much, in fact a couple of thousand dollars still to, to this day. You can still pick up a Dali lithograph if it's a good quality lithograph, also fully authenticated, signed and numbered for inside a few thousand dollars. I own three, and I'm a proud owner of those works there, love his work. But uh, he was one of the greatest lithographers who ever lived, and he was one of the greatest men to ever create that medium. Not only that, but some of his, uh, his lithographs look like original paintings. They are that exact and precise, and he was that masterful at it. Surrealism, of course, was about a dreamlike state, and it was about evoking uh, different thoughts and feelings in the viewer, but doing it with real-type images in an unreal setting, or in a real-type setting with un unreal-type figures. Those are how you look at surrealist paintings, and that's how you can kind of, uh, kind of have a great look at it. But evoking the subconscious, and more precisely, the un unconscious mind, and the work of Sigmund Freud as well. The great masters of the movement, of course, were Salvador Dali, Miro, Paul Klee, uh, André Breton, Max Ernst, and, uh, and René Magritte as well. My name's André Knott for BlankCanvasTV.com. We're changing the way you see and experience art. We will see you on another episode. Hope you enjoyed Surrealism. It's amazing, isn't it?